Hey, hey, welcome to Harmony Express Schoolie, episode 38. I thought this time, since we're in the yard here for a little while, would kind of give a little detail as to what's going on with those uh, panels up on top of the bus and give an overview of our solar system. So stay tuned, lots of good stuff to come. Here we go. And like any good solar installation starts, it starts with the old solar panels. In order to see the solar panels, we gotta get up on the roof. Here we go. So we're up here on the roof and uh, like the beginning of any good solar installation, it starts with the solar panels. You notice we have four solar panels, two in the front, two in the back. Um, those are each 235 watts a piece. So you add all four of those and you get 940 watts total. Um, how we have this configured is the front two panels are hooked in what they call series. Each one of those panels is about uh, 32, 35, wa uh, 35 volts um, each. When you put them in series, the two of them together, you get um, uh, a 70 volt uh, panel. But um, we have those two in the front are hooked together and these two in the back are hooked together. And those both come down into our solar combiner box. That's this box right here. And that takes those panels, those two big panels basically, two 70 volt panels, and puts them in parallel. So you actually add the current that goes through those. Um, so you got to get the best, best of both worlds. The thing is, when you have panels that are done in series, if one panel gets shaded, basically it's like one big panel in the shade. Um, if you put them in parallel, the current goes up, but each one of them is very independent. So if one gets shade, the rest of them still produce. Kind of the best of both worlds is to increase the voltage of the system so that you can run lower currents into the, into the, the, the bus. Um, but you also want kind of a little bit of independence. So if there's some shade on the front panels, the back panels will continue to work. So anyway, that goes into this combiner box. Um, and then from in the combiner box, it actually runs under the solar panels and I'll show you where it comes in the bus. Uh, we used uh, an entry um, uh, system that goes onto the roof that seals it from water and moisture, etc. But I'll show you that on the inside. So now we're sitting underneath the solar panels. They're up on the roof. And as we look inside here, those wires come in, come across, and then I'll get into that in just a little while, through a, a, a breaker, and then on down. Now we're gonna replace that eventually, and I, I'm, this, this is rated for 24 volts, and we're running significantly higher than 24 volts. We're well within the amperage rating, but um, yeah, it, it needs to be a little bit higher. But anyway, this comes on down, and on through, past that fuse panel, down through the bottom, and into our power cabinet. So here's the power cabinet. Well, you said that's a bunk. Yeah, everything uh, it, related to our power is underneath there. So let's get into it, shall we? All right, so our main power wire comes in. Don't worry, I'll go over this whole system. Comes in and around and onto this, which is our solar charge controller. Um, it is an MPPT 40 uh, watt, uh, 100 volt um, charge controller. So it takes that um, uh, 70 volts that comes in and it drops it down to whatever, um, whatever the, the voltage the batteries need. And it charges the batteries up as designed. From there, it goes through this fuse panel here, and or that fuse right there, uh, the one on the left is for the solar power. The one on the right is actually for shore power charge if we need it. Um, coming in through here, then we come into the uh, the uh, a bus bar here, um, and then from that it goes into our batteries. And I'll get into our Nissan Leaf batteries that we use um, to to run our entire system. Um, from there, it comes out through a main fuse um, and then out into the rest of the system. So as you come through here, we are using um, a reliable electric 
2500 watt um, uh, inverter. Um, it works really, really well. The only thing I don't particularly care for about that inverter is that the fans are really, really loud. And during the summer when it's really, really hot, um, it, uh, yeah, it, it gets pretty loud and it, it's on and off intermittently. Um, over here, we have a transfer switch that when we plug into uh, shore power, it actually um, sends our 120, actually it's 240, uh, sends it through uh, directly to our 120 volt panel here. Um, we have, uh, as I mentioned before, we have uh, an independent charger that is set to the battery voltage uh, that will charge the batteries uh, if they are low when we're hooked to shore power. But everything is running through that. It's just a, a standard uh, 120, 240 volt uh, breaker panel. Now, we are, as you can see here, running on uh, 24 volts. So we have 24 volts in the system. All of our lighting and all the other task-oriented stuff is actually on 12 volt. So what you do is that, that little item right there, um, right in the center, is called a buck converter. It actually takes 24 volts, give or take, and it turns it into a flat 12 volt signal. So that, um, and, it, and if, if the voltage drops to 21, it still puts out 12. If it drops to 19, which is its limit, it still puts out 12. Um, we have then a, uh, uh, a breaker there that's our main breaker for our 12 volt system, and that goes into our fuse panel. So, yeah, looking underneath here, you know, we, uh, we, we did a lot of work and a lot of design. I, I have to say that most of what I designed came from a, a, a person by the name of uh, Esmeralda do, do, do Torca. Um, he is the first person that I saw doing uh, uh, the 24-volt system using Nissan Leaf batteries. And uh, he does a great job. And then I also, there's, a, there's another fellow that I follow. He uses a 56-volt system down in uh, in uh, the central United States. His name is uh, Carson, Carson Wind and Solar. He does a, he does a great job um, on that. But I'll give you a little detail as to how I put, uh, put my batteries together because I actually am going to increase the capacity of my system. We have nine cells here, um, and those are hooked in uh, series parallel. I'll give you that information when I go inside so I can show you that panel when I get in there. Um, but of course, every uh, battery does have to have a P BMS, and we have a Delgren BMS, um, and then a shunt over here that will help us uh, figure out our, uh, uh, our usage. Let's go up to the panel, and I'll show you what we did. So to keep myself from having to go underneath there and program that solar charge controller and look at everything that's going on, we actually installed a remote meter on here. And if you look in here, I'll show you. This just shows that we are at 58 volts um, on the panels up above. And we are uh, charging at uh, 8.7 amps. Um, that then is dropping it down to 24.8 volts, which is where my batteries are sitting right now. And um, at 20.4 amps, it goes dark a little bit to save power. Um, that's how that's set. Um, pretty much, we go up to 24.9, and that's the cutoff. And I'll give you that um, that information when we go inside. Um, then we come up here, and we have a shunt. I'll give you more detail on that. So it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, closer. No, so I'm sorry, it's noon. And we're 89.6. We've been cloudy for the past couple days, and so the batteries have been down fairly low. But you see that we're at about 890, or 896, 89.6% on the batteries. Um, the batteries are uh, maximum amp hours of um, uh, 135 amp hours at 24 volts. Um, that is just a, a number that I've arbitrarily, I think, figured out. I need to get in and I need to actually get my battery tester on there and figure out exactly how much capacity we do have in that battery. But we're charging currently at 19.1 uh, amps are going into the battery. Looking down here, it's at 20.1. So one amp is going to um, parasitic loss or to, to how the, the system runs itself. Um, as you see, we're at about 118.4 amp hours and charging. The volts on the battery are 24.58 at the battery. That's at the battery. So um, that will continue to rise as we, uh, um, as we get closer to full. Full is 24.9. And again, I just keep it on percentage here so I can kind of see where we sit. Um, throughout the summer, as we've been going through this thing, um, we're sitting in our driveway and I'm not running, I'm not plugged in 
Uh, so the entire bus is running um, on this uh, on the solar system. So my refrigerator is running, um, you know, um, any uh, battery chargers are running, things like that. <clears throat> and it charges up. Now it's noon. Um, it is fall, so we're getting a little less sun, but I'll be charged. That's, you know, at 90%, I'll be charged by 1 o'clock this afternoon. That's one of the reasons we're going to increase the capacity of the batteries. Our little gas stove um, is, uh, it does have 120 the igniters are, are 120. The one thing I don't like about the stove is the igniter in the oven um, actually comes on and, and pulls a significant current. Um, I think it pulls 500 watts while it's charging um, or while it's, while it's pr getting primed up to light the, the oven. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a little inefficient. Had I had it to do over again, I would look for a, uh, an, older, um, an older oven. Uh, that that actually uh, you you can use a match to light it or uh, it's just a spark lighter in the in the oven. So, but it works great. Our fridge is by far the biggest hog um, of electricity. Um, it runs no problem. We charge no problem. I can run all night long. If my batteries are full at a hundred percent when the when the the uh, sun goes down, um, you know it'll be from a hundred percent or ninety nine percent typically. Um, it will it will run down to. 70% maybe, um, you know, the next day, uh, the next morning, um, you know, uh, and it's interesting, you know, even with a little bit of diffuse sun um, or, or clouds, um, as long as it's not extremely overcast, this, uh, this refridge, uh, or the, the fridge, the battery will still charge even with the refrigerator running. All right, so let's go in and I'll give you a little bit of a, a, a lesson on the, uh, on the batteries that we have and how we are, how we're hooking them up together. Okay, welcome to a Nissan Leaf battery. So this is a single pack. Um, it actually is uh, it's from a, a Gen 1 Nissan Leaf. And uh, there are actually inside this uh, case are pouch cells. Uh, there are two pouch cells in series wired from here to here, or actually here to here, positive, negative, and uh, two wired in series from here to here, two wired in parallel, excuse me, two in parallel from here to here, that gives you uh, one voltage and then two wired in parallel from here to here. So here to here is a series connection. Each one of these cells is roughly eight volts, uh, each one of these packs. So roughly four volts between um, here to here and another four volts from here to here. It's rough. Um, so what happens is to get a 24 volt system, you take three of these and you put them in series. And so that's what we have in, in the bus currently. We have um, three sets of these, uh, these cells. So three cells each makes 24 volts, and then three 24 volt packs, three 24 volt batteries, makes a big 24 volt battery pack uh, setup. Each one of these, uh, according to the manufacturer, or according to the, 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 the resellers, is about um, 40 amp hours or so. They were originally about 55 or 60, and they are um, about 60% capacity left. Again, these are reused cells out of a car. So they're no, no longer usable in a car. They can't, um, they, they can't power the car for any length of time. So normally, those would go into the trash um, and you know, go into a landfill or into a recycling facility. And um, you know, it's, it's some nasty chemicals inside there. It's nice that we're able to reuse these. Now, I will be honest with you. I designed my system a year and a half ago. And this was kind of cutting edge, um, easy, cheap. You know, these cells cost 40 bucks a piece. Um, you know, a cheap, easy way to put things together. Um, if I were to do it again, um, I actually will, and actually when these batteries do finally wear out, whenever that is, um, I will convert to uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. They just are, they, they're smaller now. They have more capacity than these do. Um, you know, they, they are just all around better um, than these. That being said, these batteries rock. You can run them down to, to 16 volts or, or 17 volts and, uh, and not kill them. Uh, you can use all of their capacity um, and they are pretty easy to use, pretty, pretty nice to, to work with. Um, when you put them together, you actually put uh, a threaded rod in here to hold each of those cells together. You compress them just a bit. Um, and they work together. I use uh, copper pipe, uh, thanks to Carson. Um, I use copper pipe to make my uh, my bus bars, and they work just fa uh, fantastically. 
um, through there. So it's a great system. Um, you know, again, if I had more money, you know, and, and we're doing it again, yeah, maybe I'd use the, the lithium iron phosphate, but for now, these cells work just spectacular. Um, yeah. So I want to give a full disclaimer. Um, I've seen lots of folks out there uh, building RV systems um, and, and solar systems. Solar is really becoming popular um, and, it, and it really works well. Um, I've seen a lot of people that are standardizing on Battleborn batteries and using Victron uh, controllers and Victron systems um, in, their, in their bus. I am not at all disparaging those. Those work spectacularly. As I watch um, Will Prouse and I watch um, uh, the Off-Grid Garage, Andy with the Off-Grid Garage, I watch every one of his videos. They just work together. They have, uh, they have Bluetooth apps and they talk with each other and they work spectacularly together. And the problem is you pay for that. And um, I wanted to set out to do my system. I didn't want to spend seven, eight, nine thousand dollars on my system. Um, you know, my solar panels I got, um, I got their house panels I bought from a person locally here for a really, really good deal. I sold some of them to some, some other folks and made back a little bit of my money. Um, you know, did that. I searched for, um, I, I, I can't tell you how many hours of YouTube video I did to search and find just the right kind of um, uh, of stuff to do in my system. Um, you know, I, I I was pretty well, you know, deciding when I did it, I was not going to use Victron. And that is nothing at all against that company. They are spectacular. Everything that they, they have works well. And if I look back at it and I say, okay, well, maybe when I go back and retrofit the system, maybe I will end up using those. I don't have Bluetooth uh, apps on, on my system, but, uh, you know, it... I don't need it. It system just runs itself and I can look at everything on that monitor that I need to see um, and see how it works. I do go down every once in a while and I measure the battery um, drift to make sure that we're not drifting and I balance things out. But you don't do that very often. Um, so I just, you know, all I need to know is where my batteries sit, how they are, um, and, um, and am I getting solar at the time? Um, it is, I do have an obsession with, am I getting solar when I'm driving down the road? Um, and I do, but, um, you know, it, that's, that's my opinion. That's how I work. Again, I'm not disparaging anybody. Um, you know, this is how we did our system. Um, I have definitely seen, um, uh, you know, other solar systems that are robust and, uh, and work great. And, uh, you know, again, I, I, I recommend you do your research on that. This is how we did it. And uh, I'm I'm happy with it. I, I, I love I love how the thing charges. I love how we uh, we get power. Um, and and pretty much like I said, the refrigerator and everything inside the bus is running has been running all summer long um, since we started off on this trip. And I have never even taken a sip, not even one little sip from the the shore power of the house. The only time I use shore power is if I go camping, and there actually is shore power there. So um, you know it 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 just works. So I do encourage you, feel free, place, you know, comment down below, um, you know, if you have questions about what's going on here, um, I'd, love to, I'd love to talk with you. But I do want to give some shout outs one more time. Um, Carson, um, Carson Urban Wind and Solar. Um, he's got a, a, just a dynamite system. Um, he's working to be completely off grid, kind of in the urban area of, uh, uh, I think it's Kansas City area. And of course, if you're looking to figure out how to design a system, Will Prouse, um, uh, DIY Solar by Will Prouse is spectacular. And then if you just want to have some fun and watch a guy really give you a good education while having a good time, definitely, definitely want to check out Andy at uh, uh, the Off Grid Garage. Uh, he's in Australia, and I admire him also for getting his beer donations. I'm glad that he's got that going. I, uh, I, I would love some time to be able to have a spat with, uh, with, with Andy and just talk solar stuff. Um, so anyway... I know this is a long kind of techie uh, discussion, but, um, you know, I, I've had people ask how things work and I've, I've been alluding to our solar cabinet for several videos and I just wanted to show it. So thanks for coming along. Um, like this video if you like it. Um, and if you want to hear more information, certainly, um, certainly hit the hit the comment button. Every comment and every like um, and every subscription really, really helps our channel. So follow along. We won't be all techie stuff from here out, but we will be doing some more traveling and we'll give you some more information on our travels. Um, but anyway, we, uh, we love sharing, sharing what we're doing with you and, uh, and hope you, uh, you enjoy. Thanks for watching the Harmony Express Schooling. See you next time. Bye.